What's up, my beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of The Brotherhood with my brother, Nick Shuley, and the one and only DJ <laughs> Augustine. <laughs> Fellas, what's going on? What's How y'all doing? On, bro? Your intros get better every episode, bro. I don't know. It was so loving last time. We're getting better, man. <laughs> I think we're getting better. What do you say? You like the last, last It was so last loving. Week. He said your best friend, DJ. Like, it was, it was know, really sweet, man. He didn't, he didn't mean gotta, that. that didn't nah, come from nah. Nothing. You already know. You already know the vibes. <laughs> we know who you TJ, your best friend. I'm second. I'm second. It's cool. I mean. It's cool. I'll take second. Look, TJ, DJ, so it's like DJ's my little brother <laughs> or the middle brother, and you the little bro. So <laughs> DJ gotcha. and TJ. I love What's up, it. y'all? What's up, y'all? We back. What's going on, man? What's going on? Why don't y'all tell me we got a we got another guest, man? We're on a roll. Hey, we're on a roll. <laughs> we're four for four, three for three. Does Jerry count as a guest? Yeah, yes, he, he counts. counts. Man, he he's counts. a stud. So nah, he was, he was, he was, he was definitely excellent. We're gonna have to get Jerry um, back on him, man. His, oh, yeah, yeah, once we have, have some games stack up, that's kind of yeah. my thought. Is every time we have a few games stack up because he he watches all of them. I know he's buried in football right now with all the transfer portal and everything, so he's 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 a little busy. But big big shout out to my Texas Longhorns entering the college football playoff series. Yes, sir. Yep. Pulling for those guys. You already know what it is, Spencer Hawes. I'm calling you out again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, let's yeah. um, let's get into it. You know, we got uh, so we got we got special guests that we'll get to Zarek Onyema today. But uh, uh, let's open with the toughest part to talk about, boys. The uh, the the game last night, the rematch of the old coach. I guess it wasn't a rematch, but it's the match with the old coach, Mr. Shaka Smart. We went to Milwaukee to play Marquette, and man, it was it was not what we wanted. No bueno. Yeah. The return yeah. of Shaka. It's not yeah. really the return. We actually went up to Marquette or Milwaukee to play them. Yeah, and you know, you know, Shaka had that game marked on his calendar. For man. sure, he, I would too. He, <laughs> yeah, he yeah he had it marked. <laughs> he probably was gassing them boys up the whole week. Well. You know, I mean, they lost to Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Wisconsin prior, so they they were already leveled up and zeroed in and focused for this game because they they couldn't give this one away. Right. Um, yeah, I saw a, I saw a quote from uh, Kolick, their point guard, who man, that kid is a stud. He had I think he ended up with twenty six or twenty eight against us. He he put a hurting on us, but I saw a quote that he said that Shaka said he didn't he didn't really care that much about the game or something like that. But you know, I you know, that. That was, I doubt that. Yeah, you know, that, that wasn't true. Yeah. So, but I mean, he, uh, yeah, go ahead. The kid Kolick, he lit us up. He, he had twenty eight points. Um, for me, it's like. The schematics, if you got shooting like that, like he's not a great one on one player. He can make certain plays, but just to take out the threes, you just got to read everything on the perimeter to keep a body in front of a body. And they didn't do that. And they went on the screens. He made threes. They lost him. He got open. He made threes. And he just, he started off the game, you know, making a three point point. He got comfortable early. Then, yeah, got that's, real comfortable. A, that's a guy you can't leave. And we kept leaving him. And I mean, look, the, the crazy part about this game is to start the game, Max hit three straight threes. So we mm -hmm. were up, we were up nine, two to start. It was two Oh, and then we were up nine, two. And so the entire game, we hit four threes. And that's the thing is right. this team is just like, we're not shooting like we know we can. Right. And uh, we were, we ended up four of 16 from three, yeah, 25%. Well, we shot, which, yeah, 25%. Yeah. They shot 46% from three. So yeah. That uh, that's, that, that's that tells difference. a lot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, two two players basically beat us, um, and then they bench outscored us. Yeah, you know, they bench had twenty. Our bench only had, I think, sixteen. Yeah, um, the Weaver kid played well defensively and offensively. They only played eight guys. I don't understand that. You need a spark plug. Why not throw in the kid Chris Johnson? He can score. Why not try something different? And they really didn't. And you know, at the end of the first half, when they started to the close, I think they were up like 12 or 14. You know, they came out flat in the second half. They weren't energized. And we didn't change anything up. We didn't try to add a spark plug or try a different defensive schematic to kind of speed them up or create more turnovers. We did have, have 24 point um, fast break points, which is good. But at the end of the day, you got to try something different. I would have liked them to see to go extend it into his bench 
and try, uh, you know, one of his freshmen, maybe somebody else. Yeah, we yeah, it's a, a lot of our scores just didn't they weren't hitting like Horton, Ethel Horton, who's you know, one of our best shooter. He had two. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and it was, you know, there there just wasn't Dylan at yeah. eight, Ken, Tyrese, Ken Tyrese had three points. Right. Yeah. yeah. The mean, only we, guy that really showed up was Max. Yeah, like I mean, Max. We, we need more from those guys playing those big minutes. You know, you playing 30, 30 minutes, 30 plus minutes, 20 plus minutes, you're gonna have to you know, yeah. and if you those guys, you gotta you gotta come with it. We can't have one yeah, but, guy having twenty five. But if somebody's not getting it done right then and there, you have to go to the next person. That's True. how it kind of works. True that. It's like we really don't have a superstar. I mean, Max Amos is pretty good player, but mm-hmm. who is guaranteed minutes on the squad? I don't mm-hmm. feel like anybody is. Yeah. So if that guy is not getting it done, right. I gotta go to my next guy. Maybe I can squeeze some juice out of him. And he produces, and that's the difference in the game. He might be an X factor, right? You know, right. so we didn't, try, we didn't, we, we we got to try. try. Ro- you, you play yeah. eight. You play eight if you know that these are your best eight. Mm-hmm. The other yeah. nine, ten guys can't play, right. but you don't know. You play. You just playing eight. You got to go dig and go find the goal. Go down to your bench. You got to tr- and trust in somebody. Give somebody else an opportunity, and. That's just coaching, I think. Like you just gotta try something different. You can't keep on beating the, the dead horse. Doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, we gotta shake some things up right now because that it just wasn't. You know, look, we 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 kind of fought our way back in at the end of that that towards the end of the first half, and then they went on that thirteen zero run that just put us in the dirt. And same mm-hmm. thing at the start of the second half. It just we just didn't we didn't have it. The defense wasn't there. We just it was something something was off. And so who knows? We so we've got. Uh, Houston Christian coming up Saturday, and so and they're uh, they're like one and six, I think. And that yeah, so. this is a feel, this is a feel good game. Yeah, like we should you, destroy you play them. Marquette, who's mm-hmm. top top Number ten eight. in the country, yeah. and now you go play Houston Christian. Well, you gonna win by thirty? Like I don't get the scheduling. Yeah, you know. Well, and then we I got LSU, the- who's actually, you know, LSU's been a little disappointing this year. They're five and three, and they they lost to they lost early in the season to Dayton and Nichols. So they're you know they're not they they're not you know kind of the the, the caliber they have, but they lost to Syracuse too. So we'll see. It's you know that one's gonna be in Houston. It'll be a good chance to you know to to get out and play a neutral site game and. Um, yeah, man, they just, it's, it's interesting. Like we're, you know, we're a team kind of without an identity, it feels like. And I think, you know, this is a good time to find it. I think the, the word on the street is there's a chance to sue will be back Saturday, but he should for sure be back by the LSU so, game. So that's my question for y'all fellas. What I know Dylan is a big part of this team. He's, he may, he's probably the key to this team. Is that what we're missing right now? I know it's still early. You know, but does he come back and, and things turn around or is it more to it than just Dylan coming back? What do y'all think? That's a great question. Um, for me, I don't think one person, yeah. you know, moves the needle unless you're a superstar or a megastar. I think Dylan DeSue is a good player, but at the end of the day, like uh, what Nick was talking about, we have no identity. Mm-hmm. What, what what do we play to? Like, what are we known for? Like, when teams go match up against us, you know, what are they afraid of? And right. I, I I don't feel like, you know, when teams match up against us, the marquee teams, they don't they're not afraid of us because we don't have our identity as a whole and one person doesn't bring you our identity. Mm-hmm. Dylan DeSue will help out, but until we classify and identify what we are good at, we won't know. Mm-hmm. Look, that team, that team last year, let's call it like, like what, what it was like. They were a great defensive team. They got mm-hmm. after it. They squeezed like they like they they really made these teams work. And and so far, we don't have that intensity on defense. You look, we're closing out slowly. We're flat footed at points like we're not. It's not that intensity. And and look, you can you can get away with it when you're shooting the lights out. But we're not shooting right. the lights out either. And so like DeSue's not going to solve that. Dylan Dylan does give us a good option. I think the inside out game with him and Acemus and some of these shooters will help, right? Like, the people are going to have to double down on him a lot. It should help open up Shedrick, but, you know, Shedrick's still banged up. We're, you know, we we, we have a lot of things that got to get fixed, and, you know, we're going into, you know, th- these are the last few 
kind of warm ups. That sounds bad to say, but they're the last few warm ups for the Big 12, man. Because once you get in the Big 12, the, you're not going to play these number 290 ranked teams in the nation. You're going to be right. you're week in and week out at top, you know, top 50. Does does yeah, the Sue and, does the Sue start right away or do he, do we slowly come and bring him off the bench? I, I, I have mean? a feeling they'll ease him in. Yeah. They'll ease him in because of minute restrictions. But on top of that, like that was my whole thing with the whole roster and the whole rotation situation. You started the IT Horton kid, right? At first. Now Brock is in the starting lineup. I I I'm I'm correct, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um I'm pretty and sure. it's like, yeah, he started yesterday. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Like, Brock played 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Kaden no, played 20 No real minutes. production. So, like, Brock is not a starter. Like, I love Brock. He's not a starter. He's your energy guy. He's a guy that you need to bring off the bench, and he can raise the, the level of competition. He's going to raise the defensive intensity. Him starting is, is not a plus for us. So, like, for me, you got to switch up that rotation again. And you got to keep your, your your bench guys, your bench guys, because they are interjected into the game a different way. And when you move them to the starting lineup, it's a little bit different. He doesn't – he played 30 minutes. He was a non-factor. He was an enigma. So um, yeah, yeah. we got to well, solve that. We got to solve who you're going to start. And that can be inconsistent right there. Changing your starting lineup from game to game, you have no chemistry. You, you know, have no that, chemistry. You Bryce have to. Spy, uh, Bryce Spy was a uh, Weaver though. He came in. He played twenty six minutes, ten points. He he was. You know that's a maybe. We think about throwing him in more, giving him more. You know more hey, man, minutes. He, more, he, more I like what he. Yeah, I like what he brings. It reminds me yeah. a little bit of it's like a younger poor man's version of Jabari, right? Like mm-hmm. it's not a very different type player, but that energy that he brings yeah. kind of changes what we look like on the court. And that's I like what I'm that. saying. With the second yeah. unit, you took you took. Brock out of the second unit. So now you're coming off the bench with that energy. You got Weaver. You got Brock. You know, you got these these guys that are playing against second unit guys. If the score is tied, maybe they uplift the score to five points mm-hmm. or six points. That's mm-hmm. why you keep your energy on the bench to bring them on against the second unit. And then you, t- you start Brock. That doesn't help you. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help you. Yeah. Now, I agree with you, Roy. I mean, that, you know, you know, playing in the league, a lot of times, you know, the starting lineup was what it was. You know, we had our superstars and those guys. But, you know, me and you, we both came off the bench for most of our careers. So that second unit, we knew that was our opportunity to make a run, make a push, get the lead up or push the lead out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like I agree with you what you're saying with that nah, second unit. Yeah, because it's, your minutes, your minutes get stretched if mm-hmm. you're playing well. Like mm-hmm. I was I was a backup guard at best and. When I got out there and I, I got some stops, I got a layup, I made a three, I played a couple more minutes, mm-hmm. and I knew that. And that was my mentality when I'm checking in the game. Same with you. Like, if you extend the lead, coach going to let you rock out a little mm-hmm. bit. I didn't have that, 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 that my leash was short. Like, if I mm-hmm. messed up, I'm coming out. So I knew that, and I had the focus and the mindset to come out there and do what I had to do. And try to stretch that lead because that was the only way I'm gonna get extra minutes, bro. Right, right. To be honest, right. so but to but to I'm, your point too, though, like like if a coach takes one of those second unit guys out and starts him or does something different, that can mess up the chemistry of that group. You know what I'm saying? It and, definitely messes up the yeah. chemistry because in mm-hmm. practice we on the white squad and right, we playing exactly. against the starters. And I know your game. I know when I dribble at you, you are gonna go back though. I know right. the time and I know you gonna. Set the right angle for the screen for right. me to come on. Used to playing with those stars. Yes, guys. It, I, 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 I know where to find you. I know you're gonna come and pull over and be the low man. I know you're gonna be vocal. Like we working on a same accord. And when you playing with the starters and you trying to interject, sometimes you're not gonna step on people's toes. Right. So you're gonna just be the little meek guys, not being who you really are. Right, exactly. And that messes with the whole chemistry. You got to know the chemistry of your team, what works, what doesn't work, what lineups work, what guys, you know, have a good rhythm. Like, that's big. That's a feel. You got to feel that. You got to see these guys, how they interact when they're on the court in practice, things of that nature. So right. being being there, you understand that, DJ. You understand that. You get that. Mm-hmm. Well, sp- speaking of that, we have uh, one of the top guys that, you know, obviously who comes off the bench. He started a couple games depending on injuries. But uh, let's get to that. Uh, let's get to that interview with uh, Mr. Zarek Onyema.
Zarek, first off, first question. Did I pronounce your name right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> all right. All right, man. We like we've been fumbling around with your name, so I just wanted to make sure we got it right because we're gonna we'll be saying it the whole time. Uh, the Marquette game, they they were butchering your name, no, bro. Man. For real, for real. I'm already known. I'm already known. So, uh, so Zarek, I appreciate you jumping on, man. I think we usually, we usually start off with, uh, what, you know, obviously there's been a lot of guys kind of, uh, transferring in, et cetera. What, you know, what made you choose Texas? Uh, I would just say, you know, being from Texas, I was a big role right there. Cause you know, I would like to represent the, one of the biggest schools in Texas and just being able to compete in one of the biggest and toughest conferences in the nation right now. So I feel like that's a major factor of why I chose Texas. And just, you know, as of right now, just, you know, being able to compete and wanting to win one of the highest, you know, stages in college basketball right now. And, you know, as of right now, my, you know, my teammates, you know, we just got to focus on, you know, working on little things, and just getting better as a, as a group. And that's something I always wanted to do, just have a team that's, willing to have one agenda and wanting to win and just win a national championship. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I think we're, uh, we're really excited to have you here, man. I know, uh, I know we definitely need the, the, the big, the big fellas here. So it's, it's good to have you on the roster and, uh, man, um, uh, what, uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you were recruited by Rodney Terry twice. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. yeah sure. No. Talk, talk a little bit about that, how it went, and, uh, like you know, the first time as well as the second time. Because <laughs> uh, so I think a lot of people don't know you can You know, you came from UTEP, yeah. where Rodney was. So yeah. So the first time you recruited me, I was in high school. I was a junior doing AU in the Gasol tournament, and that's when he first noticed me. You know, I was like six six. I wasn't like four. I wasn't like six eight as I am now, but I was six six. But you know, uh, he, he recruited me. I said, you know, he felt like I can I could do something in Conference USA, and you know, he he really like I felt like he really believed in me out of all the schools because I wasn't really getting a lot of interest from other schools, and he was like one of the first to like really you know offer me. So being that you know he believed in me and seeing something in me. I really took, you know, took that into account. So, you know, I, I went to Utah, played for him, and then he went to Texas, but, you know, I don't blame him because he always, he always talked about wanting to, you know, you know, coach there. So I didn't, I didn't, you know, I wasn't mad at him or anything. So, you know, the second time around being that, you know, I went to the portal, he was like one of the first to call me up. I was like, okay, you know, I mean, <laughs> why not? You know what I'm saying? Being, he, he believed in me before, he, he, you know, and the fact that he's calling me back again to play for Texas, this, it shows a lot from him, knowing that he truly believes in me and something I, something I can do. You know what I'm saying? That's big. Can I ask you, what's the biggest difference be, um, between UTEP and uh, the University of Texas? Um, from the school life to the basketball to the day-to-day, you know, how has your adjustment been um, coming to uh, a bigger university? Uh, I feel like the adjustment has been, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot different from UTEP. I'll say that for sure, because, you know, we're always in the gym. Like, I feel like at UTEP, it was, it was more on and off. Like, guys wasn't really wanting to, like, you know, get in the gym. I felt like the culture wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like it was probably one or two guys trying to get in the gym all the time. So I feel like here is everyone that, that wants to work. Everyone wants to be, you know, get better. And just like the coaches as well, the staff, they're all like – 100 percent they're all bought in into like our success so they're in us they're in us with the gym every single day 24 7 you know if we need anything they're always going to be there and just the resources you know uh you know you can't take that for granted uh, you know i'm grateful for you know what they what they've given us so far food you know just facilities everything it's just something you can't take for granted so it's top notch right yeah, it's top it's notch. Top, yeah. you, can, you can thank dj and myself you know for <laughs> kind of paving the way we didn't really so modest we, 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 nah i'm I, i've been modest all my life now it's time to speak on it <laughs> we, start we've, been eating, <laughs> we've been eating franks and beans when we was there <laughs> now you're eating lobster and shrimp but no um kudos is, we're glad to have you you know coach terry was assistant coach when I was there and um you know he's a great leader of men um him recruiting you for a second time is awesome you know um he's definitely um a big supporter of your game and 
what you could do on the court. So, um, like I said, I'm glad you're a Texas Longhorn. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I got a question for you, bro. How's that? How's that big man group like that chemistry between you guys? I know you know you, Caden. Um, you know I don't know if Brock is with y'all during y'all workouts and stuff like that. Dylan, yeah. he's been hurt, but what's that? What's that group like? Like, what's y'all chemistry? I know y'all competing against each other in practice and you're trying to make each other better, but like, how is it off the court and you know just being together as a group? Like, how's that chemistry been? Our chemistry is, is awesome. You know, they're group. They're, they're great guys, Brock. Sue, Caden, you know, they're, they're they're always we're always like trying to help each other, mm-hmm. even even outside the court. Like, uh, Sue is always mentoring us, you know, telling us uh, even when he's you know he's hurt, so you know he's on the bench, you know, telling me what to do, telling Caden what to do, and he's just that shows great leadership from him and Brock as well. Brock is a great leader. He he's always you know trying to help and always wants us to win. So he he, he does what what's 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 needed for us to win. And like, you know, we're always competing and that, that's something that we need. But like overall, our chemistry is just great. You know? That's good. That's Man, good. I, you know, I think we talk about it a lot. Like this this whole transfer, transfer portal era, a lot of people kind of forget that you kind of got to rebuild that chemistry every right. year. And I think, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're from a military family, correct? Yeah. So you so you moved around a lot. Do you think that experience of, you know, moving around and, and kind of getting into new surroundings and settings, has that helped you kind of adjust in, in, in getting into a new place in Austin? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it really has because I lived in like six places. So, you know, I got to learn and make new friends quick. So, you know, coming here wasn't it wasn't a problem because, you know, they're, everyone's they're awesome. Everyone's awesome here. Yeah. Where, where all have you lived? Uh, I've lived in. I was born in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. Then I lived in Houston. I lived in Germany. Mm. I lived in El Paso, San Antonio, mm. then Hawaii. And Damn. now uh, my family's living in Virginia. Wow. Oh, wow. That's crazy because I've been to all those places. And, <laughs> and true story, uh, when I was uh, playing um, high school basketball, I got recruited by UTEP. And I told my mom, it was like UTEP was in the WAC conference. The uh, I forgot what's the WAC conference. The Western for. Athletic Conference. Yeah, Western mm-hmm. Athletic Conference. Thank you. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a visit to te- uh, UTEP. And she was like, no, you're not. You're not going down to Texas. It's too far <laughs> from New York. She was like, you're not going by Mexico. And I'm like, relax, mom. And I end up at <laughs> Texas anyway. But she wasn't letting me go on my visit to UTEP. Aww. That was so crazy. But... Go ahead. You, you lived in a lot of places. Yeah. Wait, what's your favorite spot you lived in? Put mm-hmm. you on the spot. <laughs> I'll probably say El Paso. Really? El Paso, why? Yeah. yeah. Put, put us on the El Paso because <laughs> El Paso yeah. is not topping Austin. Sell, Let's sell us. Yes. Sell us. Let's go. You cannot yeah, sell me. Cool. <laughs> Austin is cool. Yeah, Austin is cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I, mean, I, I like your hot Austin. take. This is, this, no, I haven't lived in Austin. I'm talking about like in terms of like living like I just got here. So, but in terms of like living, like with my family and all, El Paso for sure. Oh, yeah. cause your family's there. It's different. Yeah, your yeah. family's in El Paso. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit different. You, mm-hmm. you were getting home cooked meals and things yeah. of that sort, right? Yeah. 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 The culture there too. It's different. Like the Hispanic culture. Okay. You know? Yeah. It was cool. Respect. Mm-hmm. Respect. Speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to inform us about, because I'm, I'm, Pro Austin. I'm from New York City, and Austin is is a liberal city. The live music capital of the world. Yeah. The food is eclectic. Awesome, the people yeah. are, are awesome. It's baby Silicon Valley now. So mm. F1 <laughs> is there. Like you, you got to speak facts now because yeah. so, Austin is popping now. You got yeah, you got ACL. You got yeah. uh, man, Roy's uh, the mayor apparently. Man, he's, <laughs> he's like he's got the two, head yeah. of tourism yeah. board. Yeah. Southwest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I didn't know F1 was down there. Yeah, F1 oh, yeah. is down there. Damn. Yeah, come on, Google Tesla. <laughs> You know, we're going in the SEC. Running. Let's let's speak on it. Austin is one of the fastest growing cities in America. Facts. That's facts. Crazy. Sorry, that's sorry crazy. for the uh, quick facts, but Man, uh, so well, look, that's oh, go ahead, go ahead. GJ. No, no, no. I saw. I read something that you that you grew from five ten to six seven in like three years when you was in high school, right? So when yeah. I when I was when I was down there watching y'all this summer, I I saw how you was moving. I didn't. You surprised me the way you shoot the ball too from three. Um, you know. Like and a guard? They, 
Yeah, did that that growth spurt? Like, did you start off as like a guard first, and then you just grew, and now yeah. your your position is a big? You know, how did that work? Yeah, so you know, when I was in high school, I went to John Jay High School. Uh, I had a coach named Coach Taylor. He he really helped me develop me into like being a guard. He always mm-hmm. had me watching Westbrook and stuff like that. So I was really like practicing being Big a guard. Big shout out to Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. <laughs> my mm-hmm. guy. <laughs> yeah, so I just. You know, he he like tr- uh, trained me to you know be a guard. I was shooting like a guard, dribbling up the floor. I was more like a wing player. And then as the years went on, I just kept growing and growing mm-hmm. and growing. I didn't stop growing until like until I got to UTEP. And when I got there, they just started you know I started working on my hook. I started like it was a whole different you know position for me because I I grew a lot bigger. So right. it, was, it was a lot different for me. Yeah, that's good, man. Because that's gonna be big for you at the next level. You know, at your yeah. size, you know, you're gonna have to be mm-hmm. able to shoot that ball. You right. know, slip slip the screens. You know, pick and pop. So, uh, keep keep working on that, man. I was I was really surprised by the way you shot the ball this summer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah I had another sure. question. Who who was your closest teammates or teammate on on this uh, Texas basketball team? I probably say CJ. Okay, <laughs> CJ. CJ from Houston, right? Yeah, he's from Houston. Most of yeah. yeah. H Town boys. Yeah. Oh, okay, you are, you're not from Houston, DJ. I said H Town <laughs> boys. They from uh, Houston, bro. Okay, okay. I'm from New Orleans. I always rep New Orleans. I, yeah, Houston took me in. Say Houston, it, baby. Houston took me in, but New Orleans always gonna be my home. You know, you you know when you go down there, you good, bro. With me, my, my mom from uh, Thibodeau. She used to live down in Thibodeau. Oh, for real? Okay, yeah. yeah, that's not far from New Orleans, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, is there, what's your uh, just, you know, kind of getting to Austin, et cetera. Like, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not playing basketball? My favorite thing to do? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Be honest. Yeah, there you go. Be honest. You are, you are you know, student athlete. Mm-hmm. That 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 clock is always ticking. So sleep is essential. I respect that. That's a great that answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. What's your uh, man? What's your kind of like pregame ritual? What do you do before every game? Is there something you eat? Something you listen to? Like what's that? What's what do you got going on there? Uh, yeah. What you listening I, to? I got to take a nap before the game. I got to take a nap. <laughs> pre-game nap. How pre-game. are you, man? You pre-game nap, man. I just got a pregame nap. Bro. Was, are you in your forties like us? No, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I played, bro, I had it. It don't matter if it was ten minutes. I had to take a pregame sure. nap, bro. Exactly. Oh yeah, you were, you, you did everything as a, a ritual. Yeah, it's a ritual, man. Got to. You, what's your favorite? Your favorite restaurants in Austin? You got any favorite restaurants? Uh, nah, not so far. I be going to this uh, Nigerian spot. Oh okay. yeah. yeah. What's the yeah. name of it? Shout it out. Yeah. I don't know what it's called. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this was their chance, man. The chance to get some big exposure. Oh, and he's like, I don't know the name. Yeah, you're oh, funny, bro. You this was your <laughs> chance to get some free Nigerian food. Yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. For real. Some NIL. <laughs> yeah, NIL yeah, food. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerian market something. I just. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right, so we'll, do a, we'll do a follow-up episode. You can shout them out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know you said uh, I know you said Westbrook, but like, is there anybody now who you kind of model your game after in the league? Uh, right now, I'll probably say like OG and mm. uh, Isaiah Stewart. That's nice. Mm-hmm. That's a good comp. Uh, what mm-hmm. are uh, What are you studying at Texas, man? Uh, I'm studying kinesiology and health right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, how, how is like, it playing at the Moody Center? Like the Moody Center, you know? Yeah. I, I haven't been there yet. Everybody, they putting a battery in my back and they kind of hyping <laughs> it. So being nah. that you're so modest and so humbled and so laid back, you know, give me the give me the truth, you know, the it's, full facts of the Moody Center. It's electric. I'll tell you that. The fans, the fans get it jumping. It's, it's different. Oh, it's different. Really, it's really cool. is, is vibrant in there. It's way different from the Irwin Center. <laughs> <laughs> the Irwin Center was too big. I mean, we, we used to sell it out. We used to sell a, it, it out. Was like it, was, a, it was too far away, man. It was like kind of cavernous. Like, but then they brought the fans in. Yeah. They brought the fans closer. It was just, it was just like, it was hit or miss. Like the big games, people would show up. And it, even if it was 12,000, 13,000, that's not filling the whole Irwin Center up. And now, like, you got a smaller venue mm-hmm. and you can jam pack, 
you know, people into this arena. And it's state of the arts. I, 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 I can't wait to see what this is all about. No, love I got to get the grand oh, tour. Well, there's, like uh, there's a wait list to get tickets, man, like season mm. tickets. That's how that's how crazy it is. That's really right. it's a yeah. wait list there's to get wait season list. tickets. Yeah, you got to get fine. on the list. That, I've never heard of that. That's crazy to me. Like they was giving away tickets. Like when you go to H E B, you get a free free uh, U T basketball ticket. Like they were really giving away the tickets, and they couldn't fill up the Irwin Center. Now you got people on wait lists. That's football status. Like yeah, Austin's, Austin's a big city now, man. man. Austin's big now. And there's no crazy. pro sports, so now you're pulling up to a University of Texas game, and you getting that feeling yeah. from. A a jam- hate, there's soccer. We got pro soccer here now. Austin FC, baby. MLS. Oh, MLS. Yeah. Soccer, it's soccer it's fire, right too. Now. Yeah, soccer popping right now. You got to go to a game when you're in town, Roy. Austin FC is sick. Have you been out to a game at the soccer stadium, Zarek? No, I haven't. Oh, man, we got to get you out there. It's, yeah, it's you dope. don't do nothing but sleep, huh? <laughs> yeah, man, I ain't sleep. Hey, like, what's it like to sleep at the Moody Center? <laughs> <laughs> They got beds in the movie center. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do have a fire. They got uh, nice lounge. Hey, they got a fire players lounge, bro. It's killing Ooh, us. Really? When we was yeah. there, yeah, yeah. Hey, Zer, what what game on the on the schedule, man? You got circle right now. You got any games circle? Like, oh, I can't wait for this game. I'm gonna get them buckets. Like, any game? Uh, Kansas. Sure. Kansas. Oh. Is it, is it at Kansas or uh, yeah, in, it's at in Kansas? Oh, it's at Kansas. You guys got you guys got any more any more questions for oh yeah Zach, I, well Roy I'm gonna let you ask the question you ask your garden question you know playing in the the New York the <laughs> of, uh, of basketball New York City you know the garden how was that a whole experience you know for me the garden and like the the Staples Center is probably the two prestigious or greatest arenas to play basketball in and I've been all over the world it's just the way. You know the lights are the the, yeah. the lights are right on the center. Every every everywhere else is dim, so the aura is is completely different. And um, I just want to know how your experience was at um, Madison Square Garden. No, nah, like the world's out. greatest arena. It was <laughs> it was felt so surreal, like just running out that tunnel, and just seeing. I was like, whoa! Like it just it was a crazy feeling. And, you know, all the fans are all, you know, around the stadium, my family there and everything. It was just a great experience to be able to play in such a historical building. You know, so yeah, it was just it was awesome, like a lot. Yeah, I kind of took it for granted because I worked there, too, for two years. I worked with the Knicks mm-hmm. um, and I got a chance to work there every day. And, you know, being from New York City, growing up, watching the Knicks, I wasn't really a fan of the Knicks because they kept on trading the point guards and just to work there every day was a is a humbling experience. So for people to get to go to and play under those lights is kind of crazy. And the way the that the stadium is in the middle of the city is kind of wild too. Like yeah, that yeah. whole dynamic. So yeah. it's you know it's only one city. The city's so nice they named it twice. New York, New York. <laughs> every, you know? every episode. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. I gotta, do that. I gotta represent. <laughs> where I'm Excuse me. Hey, Zer, what hotel y'all stayed in, bro? Y'all was yeah. in Manhattan. Where y'all was at? Y'all like, went to Central yeah, Park. Y'all went to Harlem. It's called like inter- the Intercontinental or something like that. Yeah. 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 The Intercontinental. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Zach, you got it. You got any questions for these guys or anything? Like, not to put you on the spot, but uh, yeah. I mean, uh, otherwise, man, we're like, we appreciate you jumping on. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for bro, sure. Thank, thank you, man. You're, you're the man, dude. Yeah, good luck this season, and we'll catch up with you later in the season if you got time. So awesome, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. What a nice kid, man. Yes, he's a good kid. He had a good sense of humor. He was <laughs> authentic. Nah, he was definitely a pleasure to have on the um, podcast. And uh, man, we I'm glad we got him, man. Especially with the injuries we've had, like it was he was big to step in, especially in those games in the garden and stuff like that. Like it was big. So he has two more years left to to play at uh, UT. Yeah, this I year, next at least, year. Yeah, because he was a sophomore. So, so this is his junior year, and then he'll be a senior next year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But who knows, man? With all the COVID years and stuff going on right now, I don't know. People getting like these football guys are in their seventh year. <laughs> That's crazy. And now with the whole what's the what's the new NIL situation? Now schools can provide NIL. No, so the the NCAA recently uh, tried to propose something that the schools could do, which is basically like an even pay for all 
you know, female and male athletes and all these things, uh, but it's basically, it's still the school paying for it. And I don't know I saw the SEC commissioner came out and said, basically like, it'd have been nice if you talked to us before you announce this and talk to the people who have to like try to pay this. Cut so, the checks, right? Yeah. So I don't, I mean, I don't know if that's going to get any traction. I know it got a lot of headlines, but I, I don't know what's going to happen there. I doubt, I just doubt it. Cause then they, they'll technically most likely become employees of the school, which means you got to provide health insurance, which I don't think the schools want to pay for that. Of course, the schools don't want to pay for anything. They just want to get a check. (laughs) Oh, man, it gets crazier every day. Like football is like this is like, a you know, just the the transfer portal just opened up and they have 3000 kids are in the transfer portal. (laughs) I know the kid, the the running back for uh, Florida, uh, ATN. Yep. Is that, is that his brother that plays in the NFL? I'm pretty sure it's his brother. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good. He, he put his name in the transfer portal. They're talking about Colorado for him. We'll see. Really? So so when they put their name in the transfer portal, basically they wait for colleges to reach out to them. Yeah. You get re-recruited. Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of the, the, like the way that it happens. But, uh, but you can still take your name out once you put it in. But a lot of schools, if you put it, if you put your name in, they tell you to hit the Jesus. road. Yeah. So if I go to college, if I go to UT and I kill, but then I don't want to go back there next year, and I put my name in the transfer portal, I'm gonna be a hot commodity. Everybody gonna be trying to yeah, get everybody one hundred percent. And they can offer me different things because of NIL, right? Like money and this and well, that. Well, they can't. So NIL can't be used for inducement. So oh. you can't say, hey, if you come here, you'll get yeah, this. Yeah, right. Yeah, Dude, right. No, no, no. But you can factually recruit. You can say, every kid on our team last year made blank. Or a player your status last year made blank. So mm. it's you like, put it out there. The, so, yeah, that's kind of but, the way they do it. But there's so also we, like, there's apparently like all this like, back channel stuff because everybody's got friends and agents that are always out there talking to everybody so it's i mean it's crazy man it's a definitely a new a new landscape so all these numbers are inflated like for instance the kid um hunter dickerson went yeah. to kansas from michigan word on the street he's getting two million dollars to go to kansas it's like really like uh, dude i i think uh, generally most of what you hear is pretty inflated but like that's the thing is nobody can fact check it. Like the only places that can fact check it are the ones actually like quote paying. So like you could come in there and be like, hey, so and so is offering me all this craziness, and like, how do you fact check that? Yeah, how do you fact check? Are they getting advance? Is it paid a lump sum? How is it paid out? So it can't be tied to anything. Like it can't even be tied to the school. So technically, like if you sign a deal that says you got a two year deal and you're getting. $20,000, whatever it is, right? Like if you transfer, but you still c- complete all of the things you have to complete, like you can fly back and do every event they have. They still have and to they, pay you. They have to pay you. contract. Yep. And it can't be tied to a school. So the kids, ah, the kids so, can still get paid. Wow. So the, the, the quarterback from Oklahoma, the, the Rattler kid, he got all this money to go to Oklahoma he was still tied up in his money, huh? I think he was pre NIL. I think Rattler was pre NIL. Okay, he's pre yeah. NIL. Yeah. But when he transferred to South Carolina, I think he mm-hmm. got NIL probably. But he's tra- he's going pro now. I think. Mm-hmm. You think he's gonna get drafted? I don't know, man. I used to watch yeah. that uh, documentary Me too, on, the, the, on Netflix, right? On Netflix, yeah. It was him. Who was the other two? It was people? a few other kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kid from Bishop think, Bishop Norman or something like that. Yeah, I don't think I don't know. He might pan out. He Man, might really look at, pan look out. Look at the look at the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. I mean, we got you got like fifteen teams or something have had backup quarterbacks playing. Like there there's a there's a need for quarterbacks. It's a pretty deep draft, which is why they're saying Quinn Ewers might come back, just because this draft is so deep for quarterbacks that like you kind of get lost in the mix. So what's mm. the let, let's talk Texas football? So what's the whole <laughs> what's the whole thing about uh? If Ewers stays, what happens to um, Manning? Archie, Archie, yeah. Well, I think the I mean the original pl- plan was uh, supposedly this is what it's, it's out there is that Arch. Ewers was going to play this year and then he was going pro. Arch would take over and then well Arch had a battle with Malik, but Malik's Malik's solid man. There's a, he's going to get he'll get a ride somewhere. Um, so, so that he's was kind of. I think so. If I, I mean, he, he'd be, he'd be smart too, uh, you know, uh, but I think what'll happen is if, if viewers comes back, like the, the Mannings already kind of came out and said, you know, Eli 
Eli sat out his first year, redshirted his first year, then sat out the next year, and then eventually started. So they they seem to be okay with with him kind of being back up another year. And plus, like moving in the SEC, man, to have kind of a proven veteran quarterback like yours is a big deal. You know, like you're coming into a brand new conference, whereas that's a chance for Arch to like get some get some time in. And, and honestly, if if yours gets hurt, like Arch will be the guy. So it's uh, man, it's uh, it's exciting times for Texas football, man. It's yeah, taking this school football playoffs. Let's talk about it. Our <laughs> University of Texas Longhorns, the number three ranked team in the AP, going against the number two team, undefeated Washington Huskies. Spencer Hawes, you know what it is because <laughs> you went to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's it's gonna man, it's gonna be a, a real battle. The, the matchup on paper of that game is it, 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 they got they got it kind of right in the fact that Alabama's playing Michigan, the two really like physical kind of grinded out teams, and then you've got the two like aerial attack, fun you know kind of aired out stuff between UW and Texas. It's gonna be fun, man. Like that that UW team and Texas match up very well. It's like their well, strength is passing and, and our secondary is not as strong. Our strength is offense and their defense isn't as strong. So it's going to be, it's going to be a track meet. Yeah. What well, let's game? talk about it. It's a rematch though. January 1st us, in New Orleans. They, they beat Ooh. us in the Alamo Dome last year. Right? I was at that game. It was, it so was rough. Like, like this is a great matchup against two great teams and I can't wait to see the outcome. You know, I'm pulling for Texas big time. I hope so. <laughs> of course. What you mean? We're in the playoffs. Like, we no, two we, wins away we, from winning man. the national championship. Like, it's big time, I'm, man. And I'm getting got, 05 vibes. I'm getting Vince Young fi- vibes. Dude, you, you guys know? know it. When that football team wins, it takes the profile and the level of sports on campus to just a whole other level, man. So it's big. And plus, you got. You know, we got the volleyball team playing right now. I'm in the, watching in the it right now. They, they're playing Tennessee, but yeah. we're the real UT. Hook them. <laughs> the women's um, women's team's 10-0 and right now, knocked off UConn at home. So, like, the women's team's killing it, man. I actually reached out to uh, to Rory Harmon, the point guard, to to jump on our podcast because I think we need to show some love. We to need the, her, yes. Yeah, we, need, the, we need the, you, the Rory. Sister, the sisterhood. <laughs> the sisterhood. We want to hear but, your story because you out there – you are hooping it up. So yeah, big balling. shout out to Rory. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we would love for you to be on the podcast and, you know, looking forward to another episode. Uh, well, man, that uh, it was awesome having Zarek on. I'm going to try to line up another guest. Just keep these, keep these coming, man. And I, we got to get this. I want to make right this, now. I want to make this Rory Harmon thing happen. You know who we should get on here too, who is a great interview is Mr. Vic Schaefer, the coach of the of the women's basketball team, man. He's hey. he's a solid dude and like he's a great interview. So we I need to I'm gonna reach out. That'd be good. I'm open for good. bringing on Rory. Like that would dude, be dope. Like let's she's let's cold, try to work on man. that one. Yeah. She's definitely she's one of them. She's yeah. one of them. For real. Well, well, we'll get a special guest. We'll get it going. I keep threatening to have Adam Gracie on here. We need to have the man Adam Gracie on here. We're just going to we're going to tease Dude, we're, AG we're pumping every week. Him up. We're pumping him up so much. We got to get like this Adam Gracie. Yes. Oh, it's going to be a lot of jokes for sure. It's going to be a full cap out session. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, it was good talking with y'all guys. Always just yes, getting sir. more fun and more fun every time we do it. So we'll uh, we'll be back next week. And uh, yeah, looking forward to chatting again, fellas. Definitely yes, appreciate you guys. Y'all yeah, enjoy. Week, man. See, See you next show. week. <laughs> <laughs>